citizens, and welcome to Unknown. I'm Jason McClellan. Thanks for hanging out with me. Newly proposed legislation would require U.S. intelligence agencies and the Department of Defense to assemble a report providing a picture of the current UFO situation. How would that work? And what does that even mean? Let's talk about it today. This story first grabbed my attention with a tweet posted by Politico journalist Brian Bender just after 11 p.m. Pacific time on Monday, June 22nd. The tweet states, quote, Senate Intelligence Committee wants a government-wide report in 180 days on UFOs, or Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon, as they are now called, and it wants it to be unclassified. This is a big deal, Congress stepping in to force unified and public reporting, end quote. This post included a photo showing a portion of the document, the apparent source of what Mr. Bender was referring to. At 11.42 p.m., he followed up that tweet with another, this time with a link to the full document, a Senate Intelligence Committee markup of the fiscal 2021 Intelligence Authorization Bill. On Tuesday, June 23rd, To the Stars Academy of Arts and Science, or TTSA, started tweeting about the story at 9.04 a.m., stating, quote, In May 2019, TTSA posted proposed draft language by Chris Mellon for Congress to take action, and just last week, the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence incorporated his long-standing suggestion to require the Intelligence Committee to do a full written unclassified assessment of the UAP issue, end quote. Chris Mellon started tweeting about this as well. At 9.25 a.m., he tweeted a link to the full document, along with the message, quote, Congratulations to the Senator Marco Rubio and the Senate Intelligence Committee and staff for requiring the executive branch to, at long last, evaluate UAP in the interest of national security and our dedicated military personnel, end quote. Chris Mellon is a former United States Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Intelligence, and he currently serves as the chairman of the Scientific and National Security Policy Advisory Board at To The Stars Academy of Arts and Science. Before Chris started posting on Twitter about this news, Tom DeLong, TTSA's co-founder, was understandably excited by this news, and he tweeted, quote, To the stars has done it again. Chris Mellon was able to get unidentified aerial phenomena language inserted into the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence Authorization Act for fiscal year 2021, end quote. Then, at 11.13 a.m. Pacific, still on Tuesday, June 23rd, Brian Bender published a story on Politico titled, quote, Senators want the public to see the government's UFO reports, end quote. That started a stream of coverage for mainstream media outlets like Vice, Motherboard, The New York Post, The Drive, Popular Mechanics, and many others all around the world. Okay, so that paints a little picture of this story unfolding. Now let's get into the document at the center of all this attention. This draft intelligence authorization act for fiscal year 2021 was submitted by Senator Marco Rubio on June 17th on behalf of the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence. The bill contains a section titled Advanced Aerial Threats. Here's what it says, quote, The committee supports the efforts of the Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon Task Force at the Office of Naval Intelligence to standardize collection and reporting on unidentified aerial phenomenon any links they have to adversarial foreign governments, and the threat they pose to U.S. military assets and installations. However, the committee remains concerned that there is no unified, comprehensive process within the federal government for collecting and analyzing intelligence on unidentified aerial phenomena, despite the potential threat. The committee understands that the relevant intelligence may be sensitive, 
Nevertheless, the committee finds that the information sharing and coordination across the intelligence community has been inconsistent, and this issue has lacked attention from senior leaders. Therefore, the committee directs the DNI, in consultation with the Secretary of Defense and the heads of such other agencies as the Director and Secretary jointly consider relevant, to submit a report within 180 days of the date of enactment of the Act to the Congressional Intelligence and Armed Services Committees on Unidentified Aerial Phenomena, also known as Anomalous Aerial Vehicles, including observed airborne objects that have not been identified." End quote. The committee includes a list detailing exactly what they want included in the requested report. Number one, a detailed analysis of unidentified aerial phenomena data and intelligence reporting collected or held by the Office of Naval Intelligence, including data and intelligence reporting held by the Unidentified Aerial Phenomena Task Force. Number two, a detailed analysis of unidentified phenomena data collected by geospatial intelligence, signals intelligence, human intelligence, and measurement and signals intelligence. Three, a detailed analysis of data of the FBI, which was derived from investigations of intrusions of unidentified aerial phenomena data over restricted United States airspace. Number four, a detailed description of an interagency process for ensuring timely data collection and centralized analysis of all unidentified aerial phenomena reporting for the federal government, regardless of which service or agency acquired the information. Number five, identification of an official accountable for the process described in paragraph four. Number six, identification of potential aerospace or other threats posed by the unidentified aerial phenomena to national security and an assessment of whether this unidentified aerial phenomena activity may be attributed to one or more foreign adversaries. Number seven, identification of any incidents or patterns that indicate a potential adversary may have achieved breakthrough aerospace capabilities that could put United States strategic or conventional forces at risk. And number eight, recommendations regarding increased collection of data, enhanced research and development, and additional funding and other resources. The final details instruct that, quote, the report shall be submitted in unclassified form, but may include a classified annex, end quote. Wow, pretty interesting, right? We've got a couple of elements here that we can pull out and quickly analyze. First, let's talk about that Unidentified Aerial Phenomena Task Force name drop. This is new. I mean, last month, researcher John Greenwald brought attention to statements obtained by writer Roger Glassell from DOD spokesperson Susan Goh, who stated that, quote, the investigation of UAP sightings by the multi-agency task force is ongoing, end quote. Multi-agency meaning the DOD and the U.S. Navy. That was really the first realization of a current UFO task force. Now, we see a UFO task force mentioned again, and we have a name to go along with it. One more quick thing about the name of this task force. It's mentioned by name twice in this bill, but the name varies slightly each time. The first mention calls it the Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon Task Force, whereas the second mention calls it the Unidentified Aerial Phenomena Task Force. There's a variation there between phenomenon and phenomena. What does that mean? Likely nothing. These two words are commonly and incorrectly used interchangeably and inconsistently in the UFO community, so it wouldn't be surprising at all to see the same issue outside the UFO community. I suspect this is just a simple mistake. I remember seeing this happen all the time when I worked at the UFO media company Open Minds. When others would write about the company, or even when we would write about the company ourselves, it wasn't uncommon to see inconsistencies with how the name of the company was written. The name of the company was Open Minds Production. Yes, production, with no S. Kinda dumb, I know, but that's what it was. So, understandably, the name was routinely written as Open Minds Productions in the same document or story where it was correctly written as Open Minds Production. Human error. It happens. A lot. 
I don't point out this discrepancy because I think there's something suspicious or conspiratorial going on with the inconsistency. Rather, I'm highlighting this issue because it leaves us not knowing the official name of this task force. Is it the Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon Task Force, or is it Unidentified Aerial Phenomena Task Force? We won't know until we have additional official statements. There's no telling how long that will take. Remember that it took a little while to get the whole naming discrepancy for the Pentagon's UFO program figured out. So, related to the Pentagon's ATIP program, here's a question about this newly revealed task force. Is this UAP task force the current version of ATIP? You might remember that when news broke about the Pentagon's Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, the official word was that the program ended in 2012. But the person responsible for exposing the program's existence, a former director of the program, Luis Elizondo, has always insisted that the Pentagon's UFO program never ended. So is this task force that program? Maybe, but we don't know. Luis Elizondo currently serves as the Director of Government Programs and Services at To The Stars Academy of Arts and Science. TTSA issued a press release on June 24th stating that, quote, the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence introduced a bill for 2021 that includes an official public request for a UAP task force, end quote. Well, this makes it sound like the UAP task force doesn't exist yet. That's a little confusing. The wording in the Intelligence Authorization Act for fiscal year 2021 clearly states that the Senate Select Committee, quote, supports the efforts of the Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon Task Force at the Office of Naval Intelligence, end quote. The task force, not a task force. And the first thing the committee is asking for is a, quote, detailed analysis of unidentified aerial phenomena data and intelligence reporting collected or held by the Office of Naval Intelligence, including data and intelligence reporting held by the Unidentified Aerial Phenomena Task Force, end quote. So these statements make it pretty clear that the UAP task force is a thing that already exists, not something that is being requested. But we'll probably get a little clarification on that issue soon. On Thursday, June 25th, TTSA announced that it would host a special podcast with Chris Mellon and Luis Elizondo on the topic of the new bill. So that's probably a great place to get more clarification and insight from these key players involved with this story. The episode you're currently listening to was published on Monday, June 29th, and TTSA said their podcast episode would drop this week. So depending on when you're listening to this, it might already be out. So look for that if you're interested. Another element of the Intelligence Authorization Act for fiscal year 2021 worth discussing for a minute is the real guts of the request, a detailed analysis of UFO data and reports from the Office of Naval Intelligence, the UAP Task Force, and the FBI. Who knows what kind of things will be in that report? Who knows how long the ONI has been collecting UFO reports and data? We don't even know when the UAP Task Force began. And the seemingly random inclusion of the FBI in this request is interesting. I mean, the request explains that the specific FBI information in question comes from, quote, investigations of intrusions of unidentified aerial phenomena data over restricted United States airspace, end quote. Now, I'm just guessing here, but I assume they mean investigations of UAPs over restricted airspace, not investigations of UAP data over restricted airspace, as it says. That's probably a typo, but regardless, the FBI's been in the UFO game for a long time, including keeping tabs on UFO researchers, as weird as that sounds. But yeah, the inclusion of the FBI in this request, as opposed to other groups, like the Air Force or even the CIA, is curiously specific and makes it seem like the committee is looking to paint a specific picture in the report it's requested. The focus is obviously on military, most likely with an end game of justifying a military funding request. If this were really about getting a full picture of the current UFO issue, or a genuine attempt to get to the bottom of the UFO issue, there would be additional information and participation requested from organizations like the FAA, and procedures for civilian UFO reporting would be requested. But that's not the case here. This only focuses on the DOD, the Navy, and the FBI, with specific wording limited to incidents over restricted airspace. Even Chris Mellon's and TTSA's public comments about this are focused on the military. Quote, 
the potential threat it poses to our men and women in uniform, end quote, end quote, in the interest of national security and our dedicated military personnel, end quote. Something this request makes abundantly clear is something we've known all along, and that's the absolute mess that exists when it comes to interagency information sharing. It's a cluster. There is no centralized UFO-related data system for the federal government, and that's something this committee hopes to change. When we step back from the details of the Intelligence Authorization Act for fiscal year 2021, what do we think we'll get out of this? Well, based on some of the ridiculous headlines about this story, and seeing the response from many who clamor for government disclosure related to UFOs, there are more than a few people who think acknowledgement of government-held extraterrestrial technology and knowledge of intelligent extraterrestrials is coming. I wouldn't hold my breath there. But many others are expecting this exercise to result in a landmark public release of government-held UFO information. And that's definitely possible. But it's a long road for that outcome to be actualized. First, this assumes that the mentioned groups or agencies possess worthwhile information and that they want to share that information with the committee. Second, although the instructions state that the report will be submitted in unclassified form, it's at their discretion to put information in a, quote, classified annex, end quote. So the public might not see anything noteworthy at all, aside from the usual government UFO documents we're used to seeing these days, featuring a few summaries of fighter pilots seeing and attempting to engage strange things in the sky. And finally, that's if there's a report at all. This bill still has a long road ahead. The bill was introduced in the Senate on June 8th and reported on June 17th. It still has to be voted on in the Senate. If it passes there, then it has to pass in the House. If it passes there, then it has to be signed by the President before becoming law. If all of those things happen then the UAP task force and others have 180 days to assemble the requested report. So whatever information we, the public, will see from this exercise is still pretty far out. Oh, and not that it means shit, but Scopos Labs, a company that uses AI to predict policy outcomes, currently has this bill listed at a 49% chance of being enacted. I wouldn't put too much stock into that, however. Just something interesting I noticed. If we look at previous assessments of the UFO situation conducted by the U.S. government, the results haven't been that great for people wanting some juicy UFO secrets. In fact, they're almost never good for the UFO community. The Air Force's Project Blue Book and the Air Force-funded Condon Report, the CIA's Robertson Panel, these things almost always result in the government essentially saying, UFOs? Nah, not really anything to this. Yeah, there's some strange stuff in the sky, but... We can identify most of it, and the stuff we can't, we probably could if we cared to look more. But it's not a matter of national security, so no. Official statements like this diminish the UFO topic in the eyes of the public, and, well, you can see how a seemingly positive thing can turn negative pretty quickly. And looking specifically at the U.S. Senate, there have been plenty of senators interested in the UFO topic. Barry Goldwater is a well-known example. He was a firm believer in intelligent extraterrestrial life, and he was also of the opinion that the government investigates UFOs and keeps that information secret from the public. He actively attempted to get information related to the subject, but was unsuccessful because the military informed him that the information he was requesting was top secret. Then there's former Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid, who, along with two other senators, spearheaded the Advanced Aerospace Weapons Systems Application Program the precursor to the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program. These are programs instigated by senators, and yet we, the public, didn't get any of this information. In fact, we're lucky we have the little information about these programs that we do. Harry Reid wanted ATIP to be more hidden than it was. He wanted it moved to a special access program, making the information more hidden, not more public. We also know that the Defense Intelligence Agency provided information from the ATIP program to several members of both the Senate and the House, including the late John McCain, the majority and minority leaders, and several committees. So the Senate and Congress as a whole are not completely in the dark when it comes to UFOs. It's also been demonstrated that it doesn't matter how many times they ask, the military will disclose what it wants to disclose. 
It's great to see UFOs mentioned in the Senate record. And it's always good to see discussions about this topic taking place at the highest levels. But again, historically, public knowledge hasn't benefited from these exercises. And in some cases, the legitimacy of the UFO subject has been negatively affected. Let's hope that isn't what happens with this latest effort. I don't know what, if anything, the public will see from all this. At the very least, I hope the committee is able to implement a centralized reporting process and an appropriate individual or a group to oversee that monumental task. Then, maybe, one day, the government will have something worthwhile to share with the public. Until they get their shit in order, they aren't appropriately equipped to know anything, let alone share revelatory information with the world. Well, citizens, that's going to do it for this episode. You can always find more episodes of Unknown on all the major platforms like Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Pandora, and iHeartRadio. Subscribe on your favorite podcast platform so you're notified when we publish new episodes. And it would be awesome if you left a positive review for the show, too. You can always find this show and our other shows at RoguePlanet.tv because Unknown is a Rogue Planet production. RoguePlanet.tv is your home for all the strange. Thanks again for hanging out with me today. I'm Jason McClellan. Do us a favor, friends. Always treat the UFO subject with the cautious and responsible skepticism it deserves. Question everything. Have the courage to form your own opinions. Keep truth as the focus of your quest, even if the truth conflicts with your opinions. And, of course, stay strange. Stay strange.